Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on 13 News at Noon. I'm Matthew Foltz. This afternoon, a man and woman are dead and two teens hurt after a shooting on the city's south side. Police are now considering this a murder-suicide. We first brought you this as breaking news last night right here on 13 News at 11. It happened around 9 p.m. at a home on Waters Sun Way Circle near Bluff and Edgewood Avenue. IMPD tells us officers were called to the area for a domestic incident. When officers arrived, they heard gunshots and then officers found a man and woman dead in the backyard of the home. They also found two teenage girls shot inside the home. They were taken to the hospital and at last check, one is in critical and the other is in stable condition. This is just tragic for them. It's horrific. It's horrible for this community. This is not something that anybody would expect. Police tell 13 News all four victims are believed to be related. IMPD also says the man killed once served as, as a reserve police officer. Of course, we will continue to follow this story and bring you any updates both on air and online at WTHR.com. Well, this afternoon, we're learning more about the death of a three month old baby boy from Lafayette. His death is now being investigated as a homicide. Right now, investigators believe baby Jacob died of suffocation after finding him in a sealed bucket Sunday at a Lafayette apartment. A silver alert was issued for the baby. Court documents reveal the baby's mother told police her husband came in her bedroom on Saturday and took the baby. Those documents also say he came back 30 minutes later and began hitting her. Police later arrested him at, at an apartment complex in Lawrence. The baby was nowhere to be found. Right now, the man is facing preliminary charges of attempted murder and domestic battery for the case involving his wife. Well, time is now 1202 turning now to the forecast as we take you outside for a live look over downtown Indy. It's a quiet Tuesday afternoon. As you can see, lots of clouds in the sky, but Chelsea, we're watching for possible rain this afternoon. Not this afternoon. We have a couple more days until that chance for rain returns okay. into our area, but we are seeing some of those cumulus clouds that are forming in the heat of the afternoon. So really, that's what we're going to see, which we can see on our time lapse. Check this out. We had clear blue skies this morning, and then once we started to heat up, those clouds started to develop. As we continue to look across central Indiana this afternoon, it is 79 in Greensburg, 78 in Indianapolis, 76 in Carmel, while Crawfordsville, you're at 74. But overall, it is a beautiful day across central Indiana. It should be look at our muggy meter. Some areas seeing those 60s, so seeing a little bit more moisture in the air, but overall not too bad if you're going to be out and about this afternoon. High temperatures will be warming on up into those low to middle 80s, so a few degrees warmer than the past couple of days. We will get to soak in some of that sunshine mixed in with some of those clouds. Now, a high pressure system is still in control of our pattern today. As you can see, though, some rain well out to our west. That's not going to reach our area, but as we continue over the next couple of days, we could see our chance for some of that rain return on Thursday. All right, thanks, Chelsea. This afternoon, we are learning the name of a man killed, killed in a deadly crash on I-65. Indiana State Police say the crash happened around 9.15 yesterday morning near I-74 when 46-year-old Ryan McKelvey ran across the interstate. Police say cars had to take evasive action to avoid hitting him. They say a Kia SUV ended up hitting the man. That driver stayed on scene and cooperated with police. Well, some students heading to school in Wayne Township had to transfer to a new school bus this morning following a car crash several hours ago. Wayne Township fire officials tell us that two cars crashed just before 8 this morning at the intersection of 10th and Vinewood Avenue on the city's west side. A school bus carrying students to school was stopped at the light when one of those cars stopped in front of the bus. Fire officials tell 13 News the school bus had minor damage. No one was injured in the crash. This afternoon, we're learning Kokomo police has arrested a 29 year old man in connection to a half a dozen fires set intentionally. Online jail records show the man was arrested shortly after 10 last night. The most recent fire happened yesterday morning. Police say all of them happened in an eight block radius and were set on purpose. The man arrested has not been formally charged, but police say he was also arrested on an unrelated warrant. 
This afternoon, we're still working to learn what led up to a car crash early this morning on 12th and Meridian Street. Police say one car crashed into the BMC building, which is next to the Hoosier Lottery building. That car also hit a pole. The other car further in the back is flipped over. And right now we're working to see how many people were actually involved in this crash and their current conditions. Once we learn more, we'll be sure to report that to you. Part of Capitol Avenue was closed yesterday afternoon after a crash involving an Indigo bus. We first told you about this incident yesterday at noon as breaking news. IFD says around 10 people were on the bus at the time of the crash. Seven people, including the woman driving the other car, were sent to the hospital. Our Chase Howell spoke to people who say accidents like this happen at that intersection all the time. Monday afternoon, you could see people being loaded into ambulances near 10th and Capitol after an Indigo bus and car collided. Yeah, bus except only left arrow. Doug Wright says yeah. with the red line running both north and south on a one way street, it can be misleading to drivers. Sometimes, you know, the signage can be a little bit confusing, particularly if there's signage saying to look both ways before mm -hmm. you make a turn because yeah. um, you're not thinking to look both ways on a one-way street, crossing over a one-way street. And then, you know, unfortunately, accidents like this can, can happen. Angie Rayner works at a restaurant in the Stutz building and says there's plenty of signage at the intersection, but not enough people paying attention. I see a lot of people on their phone all day long and people not paying attention to the lanes. And like I said, the bus drivers kind of fly down there a little bit. I don't know how much they pay attention. I reached out to Indigo about Wright and Rayner's concerns and a spokesperson with the bus system sent me an email writing in part. While they have no comment on the accident itself, they have signs along the street that say bus approaching from left to remind motorists to look both ways before pulling out. And while Rayner wants more people to have their eyes on the road, the Wrights want to see a change in the bus routes on Capitol Avenue. Going with the flow of the traffic, you know, instead of having to manage going multiple, looking multiple ways and yeah. directions. Or maybe and more consistency. Yeah, maybe. more consistency, maybe, you know, better kind of information put out there by Indigo or, or anything like that. IFD says IMPD is the agency investigating the crash. Now, when I reached out to them, they told me the investigation is still ongoing. Reporting in Indianapolis, Chase Howell, 13 News. And witnesses told IFD the woman driving the car was making a left turn heading south on Capitol when she crossed into the bus bus's path. Well, this afternoon we're working to learn if a man will face charges in connection to a road race shooting last month along I-465. Police say a 19 year old shot another driver who was with his pregnant girlfriend at the time. Investigators believe it started after a piece of trash flew off his truck and hit another, the other car. State police say they were able to track down the suspect's car through flock cameras and security video from homes and businesses. Technology is so valuable to our investigations, uh, but that technology doesn't just surface itself. Our detectives did a lot of work to track that down, to track down photos, videos. Not only does it help us place a suspect in the time, but also helps us develop a timeline. The suspect is facing preliminary charges of aggravated battery along with other charges. We're also checking to see if a driver is facing charges in connection to a fatal road rage shooting. This happened Monday night in Grant County along I-69. A driver called police saying a semi driver pointed a gun at them, so they pulled out a gun and shot the semi driver. Police later found the semi crash into a cornfield on State Road 26 with the driver dead inside the cab. So far, police haven't made any arrest.